Today we'll be working on a Neo 8 mobility scooter. Customer has used this scooter very well. As you can see, the front end is missing here. A lot of hay on it, a lot of dirt. Customer uses this scooter primarily for feeding his animals. He goes from his house to the, to the shed with hay, feed, cake for his animals, horses, etc. His, his ducks, etc. So he gets a lot of abuse. Um, well rusted. So what's actually was complaining about, the scooter was going forward, but it wasn't going in reverse. So we thought, okay, there could be a problem with you. The throttle pod, maybe one side of the wipers is working, but not the other. And we're squeaking his way away as well as you can hear. So we thought that was a problem. We took a, a throttle pod out with us, but uh, it soon emerged when we were driving the scooter that it was very jerky i.e. it would go one minute, wouldn't go next, it would go forward quite easily but see when you stopped and tried to go in reverse and just held the wig wag lever in reverse it would jerk and go and if you started to push your scooter with your feet a little bit it would start to move and be very jerky so what we did find out at the very end now well, 10 minutes in line we went to the motor to see if there was maybe the commutator was needing a clean um, due to water coming in there somewhere through the mud so I'll show you what happened so what we have here is uh, the motor commutator okay so what's actually happened when we were on site we had a look at the brush top unit took it out slightly worn as you can see it's a 43 7 by 11 that was the top side slightly worn as well more on one side than the other and that's where it's sliding through the brush unit housing okay so the bottom side when we undone the dust cap which is this with a plain screwdriver that's what we ended up with here so what's actually happened the brush unit itself is stuck in the housing and when we pulled it out it just kind of physically fell out so this is the brush unit housing here not off the one off the scooter but I'm just showing you how it, how it would go that would fit in there and when we opened the dust cap it fell out and the brush unit was stuck inside there so that would tend to go in there it's fit in there and that will then hit the commutator here now as you can see it's all discolored which is the carbon so we can clean that with a glass fibre pen but it's quite worn in the middle plus we've also got problems with the, the brushing it getting stuck in the housing so customers decided to physically replace the whole motor and that should be golden in colour now we could actually put that in the lathe and just skim a fraction off there because there's still a little bit left to do on there make sure that there's no contacts in between each individual segment here and then we test the motor again but as well as as you've seen on this brush unit which I've got in here if I push that in here you can see it's slightly worn to the side so that tells me that this head bearing here is slightly moving backwards and forwards so it should be kind of even but it's not even so as well as could also be a lot of play in here pushing the brush unit to the side so we're going to replace the motor anyway but uh, if you don't have the money, um, you could kind of clean, clean the, the, the guide out, put a new bearing on top here, get this uh, skimmed and cleaned. But uh, yeah, again, it's just a very dirty motor. <sighs> the best thing, the quickest way to do is to, to get the motor replaced. So what we're going to do is, by the way, that's how a new motor brushing it looks like, so you can tell the difference. How nice and golden it is how dark that side is that's a, a 6 by 10 the 43 here is a 7 by 11 so you can see the difference that's still okay for lengthwise as it goes down to this wee line here that's when you get it replaced but uh, yet again is if it's in the service we might as well just replace it when we're at it but as I say we're going to replace them all and I'm going to show you how to do that on this particular one now get access to the motor, we've got to take the seat off. Usually you lift the, le the lever up here so you can spin it and lift it up.
lift the shroud off, which I had off on site anyway. And the motor is located here. Now let me bring you a little bit closer so you can see what's happening. So they say cobwebs and everything in here, it's been well used. All kind of stuff for cakes. Well that's your motor there. That brushing that we took off is okay, but it's the one on the back side. So I need to take the wheel off, take the wheel nut off, 13 millimeter. Then there's four locating screws at the very back. There's one there. So there's one, one over there, two, and then underneath three, and one on the other side. We get easy access if I had to remove the wheel. Now it's well rusted in there as you can see, so I think I'm going to be struggling here. I'm going to be struggling. I'm also going to take off the, the back panel as well to make it easy access. So maybe get maybe get away without taking it off here. Because here are the bolts here. So you can see one of the bolts there, one here, one over there, and there'll be one underneath. So I'll maybe get away without taking them taking the wheel off. It's off. So there you can maybe see the, the brush in it, it's stuck away in there, so it's kind of heated up and stuck in there. So that's the reason why we're replacing it. And it's had a lot of use as well. The other side was kind of black in colour and inside. So all I'd need to do is find where the connection goes. Now these all have retaining clips on the controller, so be delicate with it. You don't want to damage the retaining clip, which is here. And that's the motor off. There we go. Right, so now I've got the, the motor off. I need to take the electric brake off it to put onto the new motor. One, two, All I need to do is when I take it off, just to remember at the brake lever, the, the main loom's at 12 o'clock and the brake lever sits at 7 o'clock. So when I put it on the new motor, I know exactly where it goes. This one has three screws holding the electric brake on. There we go, that's the brake off. I'm just gonna check the brake that's working okay. Spinning free, I know it's working all right, but just, that's how you can tell. Put it in the manual, spin in as freely as you want. Motor, that will get binned. Now oh, I've got a new motor here. Let me just open the box.
in one new motor. So the loom's at 12 o'clock. Oh look, it's not got a nut on it. That's a pain. Sometimes they come with nuts, sometimes they don't. So what we need to do is remove this nut and put it on here. So what we need to do is get a very small allen key, usually about one and a half to two millimeters. Put it in there, usually two of them on there, and there's the other one there. Now, as you can see, it's not completely round. Some of them are completely round. This one hasn't. It's got a flat edge to it where this is the first one you put in, the first grommet you put in here, and that will sit against this flat face here. Right, so... And then the one on this side. Just a couple of turns is good enough for it to come off. Now I've just removed the, the nut, locate nut for the electric brake off the old motor, putting it onto this one here. And I need to ensure that I put it on the right way. And this one it will only go on one way, so you've got your flat edge here. That's going to sit against this flat edge, and that's the one we tighten first. Now, the thing is when you put it on, it slips right down to the the brush unit housing here, which is where the brushes are located. But what we're going to do is, as we tighten it, we'll lift it up so that there's a gap in between it. So I'm going to turn it around so it's easier from this side for me to do. Right, so. Right, so if I have a look at that, there's plenty of room in there. Plenty of gap there, so let me just, that's tighten. Now I just need to tighten the other side. Sometimes people forget to tighten these and they spin about creating heat and then they think they sent you a faulty brake. So this is very important. There's plenty of room in here for the brake to go on. Now as we said it was 12 o'clock, the loom was 7 o'clock. The brake lever. Now I need to make sure that's free. So seven o'clock. There's one of the locating holes here, here, and here. Now when I put this on, I make sure that it's the brake's off, so it moves about. If the brake was on, I wouldn't be able to move the disc around to find the locating holes. As well as when I put the screws in, I don't tighten them all up. Because if I tighten one up, the other one may be not aligned properly. So one. Two. And this one's a wee bit awkward. Mm -hmm. It's in amongst. Now. That's it on tight, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can spin the motor, and I'm spinning the motor quite nice and easy. Sometimes if you have the nut too high, it hits the underside of the brake and it refuses to move, therefore creating heat. So you need to get the happy medium. So that's okay, I'm quite happy with that. As you can see, there's a, a locating bit at the end of the motor that we need to put into the locating bit in a transaxle. Now what I need to do before I put it on is to put the the cover on because the cover is really handy it stops all the dirt from getting in you see how the difference of condition that motor is to the to the electric brake was just this dust cover and that's the locating holes for the three screws that you've hopefully not misplaced now I've got them here now again here I'm just putting it on gently and I'll tighten it up. Right, so the brake lever sticks out the back there, the wiring loom goes over the top. Oh, great, look. They gave me the wrong connector. How is that possible? Giving me the wrong motor with the wrong connector. So, 
With that in mind, I'm no happy cookie at all whatsoever. Oh no, this is for a rhino controller, whereas this one is for their own. So the motor needs to go back. Great. Now after working on the scooter and receiving the motor from the manufacturers, like a numpty that I am, I didn't realise that's a different terminal connection. This one's for a rhino controller, this one's for the, the CTE uh, controller. Uh, which is completely a different control box. Why they've got two different controllers? We just uh, change the manufacturer. I don't know. Anyway, so I phoned the, the suppliers and they very kindly sent me another motor, <laughs> which is this one here. And as you can see, it's a completely different motor. Very much thicker motor and with the same Rhino connection here. So another phone call back. Another couple of days, I get this one here, which is the correct one, the right motor with the right terminal connection for the hour controller that's fitted. So just shows you that when you order motors, you need to make sure that you, you get the right connection for the motors. So what I need to do now again is a pain. I need to dismantle this, take the brake off and put it on this one. It's my own fault. Imagine working on these for 30 odd years we still make mistakes so 12 o'clock the loom again let's dismantle this and take it off That's his own happy. Doesn't take long if you got the right stuff. And we put the brake on here. That then goes into the controller and we'll put this back on the, the transaxle now. Now when we fit in the motor, it, it is very important. If you have a look at this connection here, that this connection fits into here. Now when you take this off, the motor off, sometimes these bits fall out. And when they fall out, you put it back in and it starts to starts to rattle. That should then fit in here. Now, every different product is different. Shop riders, for instance, have more or less the same fit in here. But they have also, the transaxle has a spline. So that goes over the transaxle connection and then a small piece of metal goes in it to hold it. Makes it a little bit stronger. So sometimes people take it off and they ended up with that and they lose this flat piece here and I wonder where it's come from. So very important when you dismantle it just to check what kind of connection you have in between uh, the transaxle pin which is here and the motor connection here. So I'm going to take this back off again, put it on the, the transaxle. Kind of line it up. I'm going to depends which way the motor is so the motor will go I'd say like this because I took pictures when it before I took it off you know which way it's going to be so I want to make sure that this connection lines up what you could also do because the wheels are off the ground is spin it and turn it to the exact way that this is or you can just put it in Fit it and then spin the motor around. There's no much room in here. Let me move this and see how we get on. First time. That's lucky. Sometimes it can take a wee while to put it on just to make sure that I've got it the right way around for the disengaging lever. Put my nut in here to keep it in place. And once that's in, 
I'm not gonna fully tighten it. I'll put all the other ones in first. Let's bring the loom out. Because that will go in here. Right, so that's the motor on. Let's put the connection back in here. And, uh, that's just connected. Let's. switch her on and see what happens. Running away. And this wheel's not turning. Let's see. There's a reason why that is. I need to take this wheel off. It's kind of, it's very difficult to turn. As you can see, which is going to be a pain. It's a wee bit tighter than a light but maybe it's due to the fact all this is on the wheel so I definitely <laughs> I definitely need to take that off so I'll do that and see how we go from there now this is the back end of the scooter there's a lot of twine in here which I've now removed as you can see twine hay straw and that that's really bad because what can happen is as the twine and the straw jams itself in there, it eventually gets pushed in through the bearings and that gets the bearing off the, the transaxle. So it's always best when we do, when we do a service, is to clean that area. So that's nice and clean now, but it's still difficult to turn on this side. It's very stiff. So I have noticed, as you can see, this bit here is the brake which would have been attached once a long time ago to a cable for this emergency brake that's located on here. So it's, let me see, it's here. But of course, the chap uses this to feed his animals. So what's actually happened, he's bent that all the way back. So what I need to do is now push it forward. Now let me put the camera on a stand. Now what I'll do is I'll push that lever forward. My screwdriver here. Whoops, put it back up. So that's me pushed it forward. That could be an issue as well. It's moving freely now, as you can see. So the motor would have been laboring, trying to keep this wheel turned when it wasn't moving. And therefore the motor overheated. And I'm thinking, shall I completely remove it so this doesn't happen again? And the answer to the question is, yeah, maybe. I don't want the customer coming back shouting at me the motor that I supplied has gone faulty and it's all due because he's got an uneven surface, hit that again, pulled it tight and of course if I say it was his own fault because that happened, um, yeah, he'll maybe not even believe me. So what I'm going to do is take a 10mm, well, 10mm spanner and uh, remove the lever so he doesn't hit it anymore, it's just bent right back. So we'll just do that then out. 